welcome to another fun video and this one is all about crochet socks and if you've never made a sock before this is a great place to start especially with this video to guide you through this pattern step by step. Today I will be using the Felici Special Reserve by We Crochet. This is in the colorway Time Traveler. It's really fun. So using self-striping yarns for something such as socks is really awesome because you get that striped effect without having to weave in a ton of ends. I really feel like self-striping yarn was built for socks. So this is what I chose to work with today. I really enjoyed it. I really like that this is 75% um, superwash merino wool and 25% nylon to give it that stretch. So it really could not be more perfect for socks and this is in a worsted weight. I will also be using a Furls Streamline in wood. These are very affordable crochet hooks on the Furls website. I have a link in my listing and also on my blog. This is a G plus, so it's a 4.5 millimeter crochet hook. And what I have done here is I've created my first sock and I have some yarn left over for my first sock and call me crazy, but I'm going to see if I can mimic these stripes for the second sock. If I were to just start from the skein where it was, there would be different color striping. I may not match it completely and that's okay. And sometimes it's fun to have two different looking socks, but I'm going to try to match it. So I have cut off a little ball of the colors that I don't want to start with. I can always use this later. And I am starting with the yellow, just like I did here, which kind of reminds me of an egg, <laughs> but it's super cute and a fun place to start. So grab your hook and let's get started. So for this sock, I will be doing the size small. Um, it has quite a bit of stretch and fit my foot just nicely. And you can choose the size you want, but I want to note something about the sizes. They are all the same width. This does have a, a decent amount of stretch and our feet don't really vary when it comes to socks a lot in the width. If you think about when you go to the store and you buy a pack of socks, very seldom are they in different widths, they're in different lengths. So the, the different sizing in this pattern is simply for the length mainly when you're talking your instep because that's what affects the length from our toe to our heel when we're building out the base of this pattern. So you can always start and see where you get. I have a few measurements in here and try it on and see what fits you best. But for this video, I will be demonstrating the size small. So we are ready to get started and we are going to start by making a magic ring. And I also want to note to have a stitch marker close by and I'll tell you why. So to get started, do the magic ring. If you wanna watch this slower and learn it a bit slower, I have that tutorial on my blog as well. We are going to single crochet, six single crochet stitches into that magic ring. Now that we've got six, we are going to close this ring, but we are not going to join. The reason being is we will be working this continuously, so we will not have a seam and we will not be joining for each round, which means we need a stitch marker because otherwise it will be too easy to lose track of where your first stitch in the round is. So for this very first stitch, since I'm not joining, I'm going to go ahead and work my two single crochet into the very first stitch of this round. We'll be working two single crochet into every single stitch around. And I'm going to go ahead and place my stitch marker into that first stitch of this round. And now I'm going to two single crochet into each of the st remaining stitches in this round. And at the very end of this round, we will have 12 stitches. And notice I haven't pulled my ring all the way tight yet. I just find it easier to work this round first and then really tighten down that magic ring. All right, now that I have 12 stitches, I'm going to go ahead and tighten that ring a little bit tighter so that it closes any gaps or holes in the beginning. And now for round three. For round three, we are going to two single crochet into the first, so I'm gonna move that stitch marker. I'm going to do two single crochets into this very first stitch 
and go ahead and mark the first stitch in the round. And in the next stitch, I'm simply going to single crochet one. And we're going to repeat that for this round where we do two single crochets into the next stitch and then one single crochet into the next and simply repeat that around. And at the end of this round, we will have 18 stitches. Now for round four, I'm going to move that stitch marker. I'm going to do the two single crochet into the first stitch of this round. And then before I forget, I'm going to place that stitch marker back into that very first stitch. And now I'm going to single crochet in the next two stitches. And that's our repeat to work for this round, which is two single crochet in the next stitch. and now single crochet into the next two stitches. And simply repeat that around, and at the end of round four, we will have 24 total stitches. And now for round five, for round five, we are going to do two single crochets into the first stitch. And of course, I'm going to also go ahead before I forget, and I'm going to place that stitch marker into the first stitch of the round. And now I'm going to single crochet into the next three stitches. And that is our repeat for round five. So for round five, you'll want to two single crochet into the next stitch. and then single crochet into the next three stitches. Repeat that around, and at the end of round five, we will have 30 stitches. And now for round six. For round six, we will do two single crochet stitches into the first stitch, and then move our stitch marker up for this round. And now we will single crochet into the next four. And that is our repeat for round six. So that is a two single crochet into the next stitch, and then single crochet into the next four. And then at the end of round six, you will have 36 stitches. And if you have your tape measure handy, we're going to do a little bit of measuring at the end of this round. So at the end of round six, I once again have a <laughs> egg yolk looking thing going on here, um, which I'm really pleased about because it's similar to the first one, a little bit more yellow, but I think it will be close enough. We are going to measure across here just to make sure that we are on track. This should be about two and three fourths inches across. If yours is a lot smaller, you might wanna go up a hook size. If it's a lot bigger, you might want to go down a hook size. It's about proximate of two inches and two and three fourths inches. And if you think that this is going to be small because you might have a wider foot, you can go ahead and add a couple more stitches and that will also work out as well but keep on going and see how it fits. Now, we aren't gonna be doing any more increasing, which I know this looks small right now, but as you go, as we work these next rounds, it builds itself out. And so for, uh, for my size, I will be doing approximately 30 rounds. That's what I did on this one. But as I did this one, I also checked it when I got 
it's starting like when I started to get some of the sock built. The reason being is it's always like nice to see. My foot and your foot is very different. No one's foot is the same. And so as we do these rounds of just simply single crocheting in each stitch around, and I will do 30 rounds for the size small, it will be around 34 rounds for medium and 40 rounds for large. Um, as you're doing that, go ahead and try it on. At the point that this is one and three fourths inches from the heel, that's when you want to stop and we'll start doing a little bit of adding some stitches in the gusset. But essentially you want to build the sock until it's about one and three fourths inches from your heel. And you can try it on and see how, see how it goes. Now remember, as these are worn, they do stretch out a little bit. So the fit, you know, it will stretch out a little bit. So if it's snug and you're okay with that, you're probably right on track. So continue to do this for 30, 34, or 40 rounds, or a custom amount that works for you. Whatever works for your length of foot is exactly what you wanna do. So a single crochet in each stitch around, moving that stitch marker up as you go, and come on back when you have the length that you need for your foot. Welcome back. I have worked up 30 total rows for this size and now I'm ready to do a bit of a little sock gusset. What that does is it gives us a bit more room when we start to, uh, to build up around the heel so that it's a lot more comfortable around our heel. So to do that, all we're going to be doing is adding some stitches. So we're going to be increasing in some areas. So I will start by single crocheting in the first seven. And of course, when I do that very first stitch, I'm going to take that stitch marker and place it in that first stitch of the round. And now I'm going to continue to keep crocheting the seven stitches for this round. And now in the next stitch, I am going to do a two single crochet. So two single crochet stitches into that next stitch. And now I'm going to single crochet one. And now in the next stitch, I will do two single crochet stitches. And now I'm going to single crochet 16 stitches. And now after crocheting those 16 stitches, I will do two single crochet stitches into the next. Then I will single crochet one and then two single crochet stitches into the next. And now I have seven stitches left and I'm going to single crochet into those seven stitches. And now for the next round, for round two of the gusset, I am simply going to single crochet into each stitch around. So I have a total of 40 stitches for round one and two of the gusset. So single crochet in each stitch around. Now for round three of the gusset, we will single crochet into the first eight stitches, remembering to move our stitch marker up. And now we will do two single crochets into the next stitch, one single crochet in the next, and then two single crochets into the next stitch. And then we will single crochet 18 stitches. And after single crocheting the 18 stitches, now we do two single crochets into the next stitch single crochet one and two single crochets into the next stitch 
And now we will single crochet into the last eight stitches. This will give us a total of 44 stitches for this round. And then for the next round, for round five, four, just wanna make sure I'm telling you right, round four of the gusset, we will single crochet in each stitch around. So continue to do round four, moving the stitch marker up as you go and single crochet in each stitch around. And now for round five, we are going to single crochet into the first nine, moving up that stitch marker into the very first stitch of the round. And after single crocheting in the first nine, we will place two single crochets into the next stitch, single crochet one, and then two single crochet into the next stitch. And now we are going to single crochet into the very next 20 stitches. After single crocheting 20, then we will single crochet, two single crochet into the very next stitch, single crochet one, and then two single crochet into the next stitch. And then we will go ahead and we will single crochet in the last nine. And now for the last two rounds of this gusset section, it's just single crocheting around. So for round six and round seven of the gusset, you're simply going to single crochet in each of the 48 stitches around. And then we will come back after that and divide for the heel. But before we do that, I just wanna say, you know, single crochet the next two rounds and then go ahead and try this on. And this should be to the point of your heel at this point. If you need to add a few rows, feel free. If you wanna take out a row, either row six or, you know, between row six and seven, feel free to take out one of those rows if it feels a bit long. This is where we can kind of adjust and customize to fit our foot. Now we are ready to divide and split for the heel. This round will create a space for the heel, which we will come back and work later. So this is what we are going to do in order to do this. We are going to single crochet into the first 11 stitches, being sure to move up that stitch marker for the very first stitch of the round. And now we are going to chain 14 stitches. And now we will skip 26 stitches from the body of the sock. Right, after skipping 26 stitches, then we will single crochet into the last 11 stitches. This will give us a total of 36 stitches for this round, including those chains. So as you can see, we've divided for the heel here. We've got 
these chains and these empty spaces. It looks and feels kind of funny, but we're going to ignore this empty space here and we're just going to be working around these stitches. So now I will be working these to create the top of the sock. This is also where you can once again customize your sock. If you just want an ankle sock, you don't need to do as many rounds. Um, for the one pictured, I will now single crochet 12 rounds, moving my stitch marker up each time I begin the round. And for this very first round for the top of the sock, just be sure to single crochet into each chain stitch around and then keep on going. So you're going to single crochet 12 rounds or as many as you like um, in it's 36 stitches around and then come on back when you've built out the top of the sock, which is this section right here. But as you can see, our heel is open. We come back and work that later. So right now, just work your rounds and then we'll go on to the cuff. All right, now that we have worked the top of the sock, it is time to do the ribbed cuff. To do this, we're going to take out our stitch marker. We won't need it anymore for now. And we are going to slip stitch into the first stitch. That kind of evens out our rounds as we're working around. And now we are going to chain five. And then we kind of turn our work a little bit and we are going to start in the second chain from the hook and we are going to slip stitch those four stitches across. And you don't want to slip stitch them too tightly. And now we are going to slip stitch in this first stitch. So there's that first one. And into the next stitch from the top of the sock. And now we will turn our work. And the two slip stitches we did on the body of the sock, we will be skipping. And we are going to slip stitch the four in the back loop only. So these slip stitches will be worked into, if you see the V, they'll be in the back loop only. And once again, don't slip stitch these too tight because you need to be able to get into them row after row. All right, now once again, I'm going to turn my work and chain one, this chain one does not count as a stitch. And we are going to slip stitch into the back loop only those four stitches across. And then we are going to slip stitch two stitches, the next two stitches from the top of the sock body. And now we will turn and we're just doing repeats. We're going to skip the two stitches from the from the top of the sock body and in the back loop only, we are going to slip stitch four. So we're really, oh, I kind of caught some yarn there. We're really just working those four slip stitches all the way around the top and it creates a nice ribbed look edge. So slip stitch in that back loop only. And then I will turn, chain one, slip stitch in the back loop only. And now I will slip stitch two stitches from the body, the next two open top of the body of the sock, and then just simply repeat. You just turn, skip those two stitches, slip stitch in the back loop for four. So keep doing that all the way across. You can kind of see what this effect is going to be. You're going to do that all the way around and then come back for joining that. All right, now that I've worked this ribbing all the way around the top of the sock, it's time to join. To do so, I have chained one and we will still insert our hook into the back loop only of that very first stitch. But then we are also going to insert our hook through the see these beginning from our beginning chain we're going to be inserting our hook into those loops along that beginning chain as well and slip stitching through both so this is a really easy way to join these the beginning and the ending of this ribbing edges together 
just by slip stitching through the back loop and then that beginning loop all the way down. And then after this, we will fasten off and we will begin to work our heel. So I'll take this off, grab my scissors. I can weave in those ends. And so all that we have left after this is our heel, which is super exciting. So I am going to switch my yarn again. I'm going to get, I'm still trying to match this. I just have a goal and I'm coming close. So I'm going to get to where I need to be on this yarn and then I'm going to join. So grab your stitch markers and come on back for the heel. Now it is time for us to work this heel opening. To do so, we are going to join our yarn in the fifth stitch over from the corner on the bottom part of this heel. So we're just gonna count one, two, three, four, and that fifth stitch, we are going to join with a slip stitch. That will count as our first stitch. And now we are simply going to slip stitch into 40 stitches around this heel. Now that we have slip stitched 40 stitches around the perimeter of our heel, we are going to start doing our decreases. We will be concentrating our decreases in the corners of the heel and we'll start by single crocheting 19. But be sure to go ahead and mark your very first stitch because we're working continuously and not joining. So you'll want to mark that first stitch so we know when we've completed the round and then just keep single crocheting in the first 19 stitches. Now that we have single crocheted in the first 19 stitches, we are going to start our decreasing on these corners. We're going to do a single crochet two together, but I like to do it in a invisible decrease style. So I'm going to insert my hook into the front loop of the first stitch I'm going to work as a decrease and then simply insert it into the front loop of the second stitch and then yarn over and pull through those two loops, first loops on the hook and then complete your single crochet. So it's just a little bit more of an invisible decrease. So now we will want a single crochet three together. And I am going to do that in the invisible decrease way where I'm just simply inserting my hook into the front loops of those three stitches. can feel a little bit tricky and my yarn's splitting a little bit so you have to be careful with that but I've inserted my hook into the first loop so the next three stitches now I'm going to yarn over and pull through those three loops on the hook and then complete my single crochet three together and now we are going to single crochet two together again so we will insert our hook into the front loop so the next two stitches and then complete that decrease now, once we've completed these three decreases in a row, so we did a single crochet two together, single crochet three together, and single crochet two together, we will now single crochet seven. And now it is time to do some decreasing on this side. So we're going to repeat those decreases that we did before. We are going to single crochet two together. And then single crochet three together. and then single crochet the last two stitches together. And now we have completed the round two of the heel and we have 32 stitches. 
For round three, we are simply going to single crochet in every stitch around. Moving that stitch marker up to mark that first stitch in the round. And now for round four, we are going to single crochet the first two stitches together and move our stitch marker up so that we mark that first stitch of the round. And then we are going to single crochet in the next 14 stitches. And now we are going to do some decreasing again, where we are going to single crochet two stitches together. And then single crochet three stitches together. and then single crochet two stitches together. And now we are going to single crochet into the next four stitches. And then for the last stitches in this round, we are going to be doing some decreasing. So we're going to single crochet two together, and then single crochet three together. And now at the end of round four, we have 24 total stitches. For round five, we are going to single crochet into every stitch around. After single crocheting in every stitch around for round five, for round six, we are going to single crochet two together in the first two stitches. Mark that stitch so we know where the beginning of our round is. And then single crochet into the next stitch. And we're going to repeat that all the way around. We are going to single crochet two together. And then single crochet one single crochet two together, and single crochet one. Continue doing the single crochet two together and single crochet one all the way around. And at the end of round six, we will have 16 stitches. For round seven, we will simply single crochet in each stitch around, moving up our beginning of round stitch marker and single crocheting in the 16 stitches around. For our very last round, round eight, we will simply single crochet two stitches together around, and that will leave eight stitches at the end of this round. Feel free to move up your stitch marker so you can keep track of the beginning of the round, and single crochet two together all the way around. At the end of round eight, you can remove your stitch marker, take your scissors, and cut your yarn. Grab a yarn needle, a darning needle, and we still have a hole in our heel, and all we have to do to close this is insert in the front loop of each stitch around. And after you've weaved through the front loop of each stitch around, you can simply pull this closed. It just brings all those stitches together quite nicely for a nice finish. And then you can just weave in your end and you are done with your sock. You might have some ends to weave in on the inside, but as far as construction, we have a beautiful looking sock.
And now you have a beautiful pair of crochet socks. These are a great beginner sock pattern, especially with this video to guide you through. And they're really, really cozy in this fleecy yarn, so I do recommend it. It has a nice um, merino wool nylon blend. And I really hope you enjoyed it. Come on back soon for another fun project.